All right, creatures of the night, it is Saturday. So you know what that means. We had Collision. Now, I thought about it. After watching Collision, I was like, damn, no wonder Rampage has sucked a little bit more lately because all the good matches are on uh, Dynamite and Collision. When I say good matches, I'm talking about the tournament, the uh, AEW Continental Classic. Um, those are exclusively on either Collision or Dynamite. And I've actually been enjoying the shows with having some of these matchups, some of these matchups we've never seen before and um, others we've seen before. But this time, everyone is trying to get their head in the game and focus on uh, making it to the end of this tournament with the most points, obviously, and getting uh, those three titles at the end. Three titles. That's just insane. But whatever. Um, we had an amazing opener here with Claudio Castagnoli and Brody King. Holy shit. These two dudes are huge as fuck. And they're amazing in the ring. Had so much fun watching these two guys. Now, right off the bat, Claudio, I knew he underestimated Brody King. Like Brody King has actually been refreshing to see him in singles competition because usually he's with, um, you know, House of Black and Trios or sometimes um, with Madakai doing tag team action. And it's been so great to see him on his own doing his thing. I know like we don't necessarily um, look at Brody as a singles competitor because we haven't seen him in that element in quite some time. And I think that a lot of people probably wasn't writing Brody's name in terms of who's going to win this damn thing. But Brody is showing people, put some respect on my name. I might just win this whole damn thing. Now, he looks absolutely amazing. He's so strong and big. And he really, really made Claudio work in this match. Usually, Claudio just looked like, I'm bored. Let me just get in the ring for a couple of minutes and just have a match and go to the back. It's usually like that with Claudio because it just seems like he's been there, done that. And this time with Brody, Brody said, Bitch, I'm going to make you work for that win if you think you're going to beat me. So. Just seeing these two go together was really, really fun. Great chemistry with these guys, too. And it was neck and neck because it's like, oh, every time you think that Claudio got this, then Brody's like, mm, no, no, you don't. Now, here is Claudio picking up Brody's big ass and swing him around with a big swing. I don't know, maybe like six timers or so. And it looks so great. Like everything he does is almost effortlessly. And with being with Brody in the ring, some things just seem to be somewhat of a challenge for him. But Brody proved to be the bigger, better man tonight, taking a win. So now he got another three points um, in this tournament. So now he got six points. Claudio got three. Um, so he's definitely advancing in terms of you know getting all the um all the wins so far so so far two wins for him claudio has one win one loss uh this could have been a draw it really could have been but nobody wants to see draws we want to see w's and w's only so congrats to brody and congrats to claudio for giving us a great match too these guys are absolutely amazing up next we had kiara hogan versus our zombie Abaddon. Now, I was complaining that we haven't seen Abaddon since Halloween, and I kind of was afraid that we wouldn't be able to see them in quite some time. But it was great to see Abaddon here tonight on Collision. Now, Abaddon has a match with Kiara, and I felt like it was decent, but it could have been better. Reason why is because these two are not in any stories. They're not doing um, anything to really make people feel so gravitated towards them and that's what we need, especially in the women's division. We need more stories. Uh, we need more matches, that's for one, because just having one women's match per show, it's not enough. They can really get away with doing way more matches than what they do when it comes to the women's division. But that's another topic for another time. Decent match with these, with these two. Abaddon has really improved in terms of their body. If you look at Abaddon from last year compared to this year, it's a difference. And like I said, it's unfortunate that there isn't really much to go off of here. All they're doing is just wrestling each other for a win. And that's all it is. And it could have been much more interesting to me. Um, but Kiara Hogan has definitely improved. And if you've been watching Your Honor, you've definitely seen the improvement with Kiara. Um, Abaddon takes the win here. After Abaddon wins, the light go off. And I'm just thinking, oh, um, maybe Abaddon got some new tricks or something. I don't know. And the light turns back on. And the, all you see is Abaddon. And Abaddon uh, turns their head to the side. And there is 
Julia Hart in the corner. And Julia is looking so freaking sexy with that title on, with the hat. She got on her little bra and everything. I was like, okay, okay. She looks really, really great. Um, they just stare at each other for a little bit and the lights go off and Julia is gone. Uh, I, I don't want to see a match with these two. I want to see a feud with these two leading up to a match. Do not waste this opportunity with just giving us a match and, and Julia retains the title. This is not enough when it comes to two characters like Abaddon and Julia. Um, they can even be a tag team if we want it. I've always thought um, that Abaddon would have been a great fit for House of Black. I don't think they're going in that direction. At least I don't see that for now but I don't want to see some just one matchup and it's over. I need to see a feud with um, these two and Abaddon really does need a feud um, in order to really, uh, you know, win the crowd over since we have not seen them in like what, almost a year? Tony Khan, a feud, book a feud, not just a match. So now we have Samoa Joe with Renee Paquette about to do an interview and here comes our homie Roderick Strong in the kingdom interrupting him. Now he's letting him know that because you're friends with my friends, then we're friends by proxy. And I'm just like, well, if I do my math right, he's right. He's right. Y'all are friends by proxy, at least. Now he's letting Samoa Joe know that the person in the devil mask is MJF. And since MJF is the guy in the devil mask, that tag team match that they're gonna have on Dynamite is nothing but a setup on Samoa Joe. And I'm just like, you know what? He might be telling the truth here. Now, Samoa Joe is looking at Roderick like, who the fuck is this? Like, I've never seen this man a day of my life, even though um, Roderick neck is broken or whatever due to the hands of Samoa Joe. And it is what it is. I just love seeing all these guys together. Like, I really love the way Roderick is, is going with this character. And it's fun, it's entertaining. Now, Samoa Joe doesn't necessarily take his word for it in terms of uh, MJF being the devil. I don't think anybody but Nigel believes MJF is the devil. But anyway, up next, we get another amazing match uh, on this tournament, Andrade El Idolo versus Daniel Garcia. Now, uh, he comes out with CJ Perry, um, and he's just dripped in like Louis Vuitton. And I'm just like, even the mask got Louis Vuitton on. I'm just looking at it. I'm just like, holy shit. Tell me you have a whole bunch of money without telling me you have a whole bunch of money. He looks amazing. We've been getting nothing but really, really great matches from Andrade. And I really want to see him at some point um, hold a title somewhat. But before the summer would be great. Tony Khan, that would be really lovely. Um... They have a really great match together. Daniel Garcia, I think many people are probably looking at him as someone who may not do very well in this competition um, in terms of the tournament. He is the youngest and the least experienced out of everyone in that tournament. So I don't I don't know who's actually rooting for him. Now, throughout this match, we do have Matt Menard, who's on commentary, who is talking about Daniel Garcia. And I'm kind of starting to feel like we're just going to end up getting a match with him and Daniel at some point. Um, because Matt Menard seems to want to guide Daniel Garcia a certain path, but Daniel seems to want to do his own thing. And I don't see a problem with that, honestly. I don't. But um, Daniel Garcia, he's really hungry for this one. You can tell that here in this match. And he's really putting a huge focus on Andrade's right leg. And, and he's going at it to, you know, weaken him um, down. And unfortunately, that does not win. Andrade uh, ends up taking the win in this match. And I'm starting to look at Daniel Garcia in this situation as in, is he going to get any wins over anybody in this tournament, especially since he's under the blue bracket. When I look at all the guys that's on there, it really feels like he's just may not get any wins, maybe a draw or two, or well, I'm going to just say one. And I just wish that there were, you know, the odds were uh, much better for him. And it just doesn't look like that in this way. But we still get a really great match out of him. And all this is going to add up as experience for Daniel Garcia. And, and I'm hoping to see much more bigger things from him after this whole tournament is over. Now, after that match, we do have Willie Mack. Willie Mack is calling out Wardlow. 
He says, Wardlow, you put your hands on my homie the other day and manhandle him. If you want to fight somebody, come fight me. We're talking about AR Fox here. You guys saw that match when Wardlow and AR Fox. AR Fox was defenseless for no fucking reason in that match. I hated it. Anyway, we're going to get those two uh, probably on Dynamite or Collision. Not 100% sure. Um, so that's going to be interesting to see what Wardlow is going to do to somebody like Willie Mack. Now, after that, we do have the Kingdom versus Iron Savages. This kind of felt like um, a squash match. Maybe it was like three minutes tops. Um, the Kingdom ended up winning. And after that, we have um, Roderick Strong using all his strength to come into the ring and um, attack one of the Iron Savages members. And I'm just like, wow, that must have taken everything out of you to do that. How brave of you to step in the ring and try to help your friends. And he ends up going over to his wheelchair. He ends up knocking himself and the wheelchair down on the ground. I was just fucking laughing hysterically. Like the way he's doing this role is perfect for him. Anyway, I, I don't care about these squash matches. Now, after that, we do have Ethan Page who, um, who's who been doing pretty decent in Ring of Honor. That's why we haven't seen him if you haven't been watching Ring of Honor. Now he comes on, asking for a little interview time, and he says that they're gonna be back in Canada next week, which is where he's from. And he said that he has something to prove and he wants to show who's the best from Canada and that he's going to be challenging someone. And I'm just like, oh, good for you, Ethan Page. You over there making challenges so you can prove to everyone that you are a winner, I guess. And then this bitch is going to go call out my man, Kenny Omega, of all people. Kenny is who you challenging? All right, bro. We'll see what happens. Up next, we get promos from both Mercedes Martinez and Willow Nightingale. These girls and their friends have been beefing for quite some time. And now Willow and uh, Mercedes want to go at it one-on-one. -on -one. So we're going to get a match with these two ladies um, next week, Saturday. Now, after that, we do have Matt Seidel and Christopher Daniels teaming up against the House of Black, Buddy Matthews and Malachi Black. And I'm just like, holy shit, Buddy Matthews. Uh, whatever you're doing in the gym, keep doing it. Keep doing it because I, I just love seeing the results. That's all. That's all I have to say about that. Now, they do have an okay match. It's decent for whatever, you know. There's no story with them. And obviously, Matt Seidel and Christopher Daniels are always there putting people over. Um, you know, I can't say that the story there being no story here is the reason why I didn't care so much for this match. I just, I don't know. Maybe the chemistry was just off between both of these teams. Um, about like two weeks ago, we had got uh, Christopher Daniels and Matt Seidel versus Commander and El Hijo de Vikingo. And that thing was just perfect. Oh my God. Everything about that match was absolutely perfect. And these guys have never even been in the ring together before. So it just really depends on who your opponents are and if you guys got chemistry. And I just felt like something about it was lacking. Whatever. House of Black wins. No surprise there. And the lights go out. And I'm just like, oh, what's happening now? You guys are in the ring. Why would you turn off the lights yourselves? But then here comes... FTR coming out there and I'm just like oh whatever these guys are not even intimidating just when I thought we were going to go one week on collision without seeing FTR here they are so now we have FTR and House of Black in the ring and Malachi is saying that they should join the House of Black and I'm just looking at this and I'm like no they should not join House of Black I don't even see how they can actually fit here and then Malachi says you know since you guys been here that the House of Black are the only ones I've actually had their backs and i'm just like when 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 did this happen i've never seen this and um they're, i guess they're just trying to get on your good side with whatever they're saying and then they end up attacking um ftr and i like the attack i don't know where they're going in terms of story obviously brody's in his little thing right now with the tournament so at least the other members have something to do uh, we'll see where it goes up next, we have Tony Storm. She is talking about Sky Blue. And she said, oh, that the only time people have nice things to say about Sky Blue is when they're talking about her ass. And I was just thinking, I was like, she's kind of right about that. Um, Sky Blue also has a promo as well. We're going to see these two ladies go at it for the AEW World's uh, Women title. So that's going to be interesting to see what happens there. Do I expect the title to change hands? It better not. Nothing against Sky Blue, but the hot potato thing is just not working for me. 
And after that, we get another really great match. We have Kip Sapien versus Ellie Hilde Vikingo. These two guys have a really great chemistry with each other. Um, I don't know why we don't see enough of Kip. I, I just don't understand someone who's really talented. Uh, we hardly get a chance to see him, especially in one on ones action. We do see him whenever they need a trio's jobber team to go after another trio's when he's doing um, trio's with Butcher and the Blade. And even them, they're super talented and should not be doing any jobs um, at all, in my opinion. Um, really great match, very great chemistry with the two of them. But Ellie Hill Debbie Kingo does end up taking the win. And, you know, after seeing matches like this, Tony Khan, how are you looking at Kip Sabian and keep putting him in these jobber situations? It's absolutely insane. But we got a really great match with them, not close to like 10 minutes or so with these two in the ring doing what they do best. And I absolutely enjoyed it. Please put Kip in more situations where he can show how great he is in the ring. Now, after that, we have Keith Lee, who is doing an interview and they're asking him like who the hell were you talking about last week uh when you were saying that um he was gonna have a fight with somebody and then here comes shane taylor and lee moriarty and shane's like i know what he was talking about he was talking about me so if you want to fight somebody come fight me at the final battle pay-per-view and i said like, yes we're finally getting this match and i get to see it live that's what i was waiting for now i do want to see what it can do here and actually i want to see a clean fight with the two of them um, I know Lee Moriarty would definitely help Shane Taylor cheat because Ch Shane has been doing the same thing for Lee lately as well. So I don't want to see any of that. I want to see something clean. Don't be surprised if Lee gets, uh, Lee Moriarty gets in this and help him out or whatever, especially after losing to Keith Lee um, last week. I just want to see something clean. And, and I don't know if the story is going to be over with these two after this match, but I am hoping for the best in terms of a really, really great fight. So now we have CJ Perry. She is about to do an interview in front of uh, Andrade's locker room. And then here comes Miro running up like he about to run into that room and start kicking somebody's ass. He is not happy about how Andrade is parading around with his wife and getting an opportunity to be in the AEW Continental Classic. And he's not in it. And I'm just like, you know what? I feel some type of way about that too. Like how your girl gonna help another man get into something that you're not in? That That's not sitting right with me, CJ. Now, she is being manipulative that i think so trying to calm his ass down or whatever when really i just feel like she has maybe some kind of other agenda here she just don't want him to get in that room and kicks andrade's ass and miro falls for her tricks and decides that he's not gonna go in there and kick his ass and actually i do want to see that we're not gonna get that anytime soon though but at some point we might get that now if andrade does not make it to the finals um in this tournament then Andrade versus Miro is most likely going to be likely um, for the um, World and pay-per-view since he would not be um, in the finals for that match, which is probably what's going to end up happening. But anyway, we have our main event. Eddie Kingston versus uh, Brian Danielson. Brian got his little eye patch or whatever, and I'm just like, oh, okay. All right. The match, great. This time, Eddie Kingston did not seem to be defeated. Obviously, last week with Brody, something about it just fell off when it comes to Eddie Kingston and what he normally does. This week, he's had his head in the game, and he's like, this is Brian Danielson we're talking about. I gotta beat Brian Danielson. Now, um, what, what really bothered me here is knowing that Brian just got cleared. He, I wouldn't say he's 100% healed, um, from his surgery or whatnot, but seeing Eddie Kingston slapping him in the face right there next to the, the injured face, like, I'm just like, oh my God, every time he slapped him in the face, I just felt something inside where we're just like, oh, I cannot look at this, you know? And Brian, he knows that he's coming into this tournament with an injury that people can take advantage of and, and probably count him out as, you know, not being 
um, someone to win this whole thing. So we really got a chance to see both of these guys really giving it their all. And I think a little bit more with Eddie Kingston because Eddie knows who he's, who he's ups against. And he doesn't want to take another L like he did last week against Brody. But obviously, Brian is the, the better man here tonight. Ends up taking the win. But I really love um, the performance from both of these guys. Really great chemistry. We've actually seen them in the ring before. This is probably the second time I can actually remember seeing these two in the ring. But whatever. Uh, Brian takes the win. And it always keeps feeling like, even before he even walked in this tournament, that it feels like he might be the likely winner for this whole thing. And, pro and, and, and honestly, I just don't want that to be the case. I really want it to be someone else. I know I said I want it to be swear, but if it's anyone else, I think I'm cool with that. But anyway, great matches um, tonight for the Continental Classic Tournament. Um, all these guys are doing a really great job. Um, next week, we got a chance to see the gold team on Dynamite, and that's gonna be really interesting. So guys, thanks so much for watching my review. I'll be back on Wednesday with Dynamite.